everybody. <laughs> uh, hello. How's everyone hello. doing? Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Hi, Al. Hi, John. Hi, Dan. Hi, John. Hey, hey, Eric. Uh, hey, uh, Eric, I was thinking that um, we could actually just call ourselves like one entity and call ourselves Derek. You know, because yeah, we were having I, that conversation. Yeah, I think that we already decided that. You're right. Did we? Well, I, I yeah. remember we had the conversation where, like, I was Derek and you were Ian. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But, like, uh, Sorry about my wheezing cough today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, that's <clears> okay. <throat> it, uh, it, but uh, anyway, um, I, then I thought about it, and I'm like, we could just be one thing. Mm. Like, Derek. Anyway, I suppose okay. we should probably <laughs> introduce the podcast, yeah. right? So this is the Accelerative okay. Thrust podcast with Derek. Or Alka-Seltzer Thirst. Oh yeah, Alka Seltzer Thirst. That's, that's going to be, that's going to be the AKA from now on, right? Our guest came up with that. Yes. Welcome, John Burns. Yay! Hey, hey. We, should, we should do. Hey a guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey All guys. Right. You know, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm concerned about the listeners because, uh, you know, you guys kind of sound similar, and I, I think I sound like you guys too. So, you know, people listening at home are going to be like, they're going to be confused. I, I think we all. We all sound the same, but yeah. So bear, bear with us, Derek, Der, Der, John, Rick. Yeah, or uh, Jarek, you know. Jarek. Nice. Oh. I think I actually know a Jarek. Actually, really? Th those exist? I've never heard yeah. that. Name. And actually, it looks just like a combination of all three of us. <laughs> it really it does. Cool. Was yeah. he a bad influence on you growing up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was probably a bad influence on him. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, Dan, why don't you tell us who John is, just in case people don't know. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, John Burns is a uh, Quad Cities area musician, uh, and uh, he has been in several bands in the past, Meth and Goats. That was the first thing that... I, no, that wasn't the first thing I remember you in, John, at uh, Trilam's was the yeah. first thing that I remembered. And then from there, it was Meth and Goats. Um, and then from there, uh, and correct me if I'm off on my timeline here, John, but from there, I think it went to Centaur Noir. Um, and then from there, Shorthorn. And then probably a bunch of other stuff that I'm not sure of. Am I missing anything there, John? No, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's some overlap there for sure. You know, Meth and Goats was still around when I started Centaur Noir, and then, uh, you know, I'm doing both, both that, and I'm singing in, in this somewhat new punk band called Shorthorn. Mm -hmm. And Shorthorn's been around for a few years at this point, right? Yeah, we we've, we've been around. Yeah, you know, it's you know we haven't done very many gigs, but you know we we practiced a lot. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. It's uh, hard to do gigs not in right year, now. though. Not. Not in the last year, though. So right. we're, we're we're eager to all get vaxxed up, and I think just one of us is is waiting to get all vaxxed, and gotcha. then we're gonna then we might start jamming again. We'll see. Sure. Yeah. I mean, right now you just never know what's gonna happen. Um, what? Uh, uh, now I did a little bit of uh, listening, digging back, which I got to say that I haven't really, I didn't really do this with Centaur Noir too much in the past but i listened to some of your earlier stuff and i is it fair to say that you've kind of changed styles a little bit because i heard some acoustic stuff kind of going on before uh yeah you know first of all i just want to say uh I'm, I'm glad to be on the podcast long time listener first time caller uh, <laughs> uh I, thanks I, uh, for being here <laughs> I, I did my i did my i did my research so uh you know, I'm ready to just go at it. Uh, you know, I've, I've, as a former Boy Scout, I know to be prepared. Nice. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to be here. Uh, but, yeah, to answer your question, um, yes. Okay, that's that's <laughs> all we needed to know, John. No, uh, yeah, I mean, it, when I first started doing Centaur Noir, it was uh, an acoustic project. So I did a, I did a handful of shows, uh, you know, just acoustic guitar and... Uh, you know, from there started messing around with keyboards and drum machines and, you know, started adding those elements to to the live show and, and to some of the songs I was recording. So from there, it's, you know, it's gone in, uh, you know, different directions. But, you know, it's all kind of just under this umbrella of stuff that I write in sort of this, 
you know, even the electronic stuff sort of still is sort of song writing songs, you know, so, you know, I just, I, you know, I'm, I've kind of evolved as a musician, but I, you know, I'm just trying to, to write songs, I guess, you know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so before, I guess maybe, uh, even go back a little bit further, John, um, when, uh, I, so tri lambs was your first band, right? Yes. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I technically I I sang in a ska band that uh, never played a show, and we had we had a couple. Of, we had like two really good songs though, but uh, but no, uh, yeah. Then I I played I played bass in Tri Lambs, and you know we were that was a high, our high school band, you know. So we kind of uh, not like our high school band, like we didn't play it at halftime, but. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's how I got started was, you know, and that's around the same time I started booking shows in the quad cities as well. So what got you interested in booking shows, um, DIY style, uh, you know, punk style and all of that stuff. What's kind of your earliest memory of, uh, being, uh, associated with that scene? You know, I don't know if, you know, the first, you know, we all kind of got into it from older siblings so you know a friend a, a, a buddy of mine named cody his brother his older brother played in this band called cross check and uh that was the first show i ever went to was a place uh in davenport called smile coffee house which mm-hmm. was like big and like yeah like the mid early 90s but they you know they've booked some really cool bands like while they were around but uh you know, so I started going to shows and was just amazed by, you know, like being able to be be right up front and, you know, talk to the bands afterwards. So, you know, I, I was pretty much hooked after that. Like, I want more of this, you know. So, so you know, just talking to bands and being like, you know, just talking to people that were booking shows and sort of, you know, I, 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 it's hard. It's kind of hazy, but I think I was, I think I might have even booked a couple of shows before I even was in a band. I don't know. You know, this this was, you know, when we were booking shows like the Eagle Reception Hall in Rock Island and stuff. So this would have been like 96. But, you know, I just all of our friends got into it real quick. And, you know, back then, back then in the mid 90s, mid late 90s, there was kind of a huge DIY scene here in the Quad Cities. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep. I, I remember that. I remember uh, like 99, 2000. I remember there was the uh, Peabody's and. Which wasn't that originally like the Che Cafe or something like that? Hmm. No, it was it was Peabody's. Uh, towards the end, there was some weird thing with the naming rights that I don't know what it was, but it got changed to the Chai Cafe. Chai Cafe, oh. that's right. Chai, not the that's Che Cafe. Right. That was a place in San Diego, actually. Oh, gotcha. I was way off with my region there, <laughs> but. There was also a lot of similar style bands coming out of San Diego that would play like places like Peabody's. You know, I remember we talked uh, a little bit on the episode uh, with Molly about the Vulcan style hardcore bands mm-hmm. <laughs> that we referred to them. I mean, you know, they, they were around a lot when when Meth and Goats first started playing out of town and sure. Peabody's days, you know. So we always got along with those dudes really well, you know, because it was kind of this you know, new to us sort of style of punk rock that kind of just mm-hmm. put the put the sort of shock back into punk, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because, you know, it was just these pale, skinny, black-haired, <laughs> black-clothed, like, weird future punk goth, like, entities, you know. And this is back Clips of Eden and Rue Morgue and yep. mm-hmm. bands like that, Spirit of Versailles. And, you know, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool pretty cool time to be around and you know there's a lot of like a lot of worship of that kind of era online like i got i've gotten random messages on facebook like do do you have an eclipse of eden t-shirt and i'm like who who are you (laughs) no but i mean i'll make some bootleg ones if you guys really want (laughs) to yeah there you go (laughs) but yeah that was kind of the beginning of of meth and goats and touring around was like we uh you know and we were a band that kind of did a lot of genre sort of melding so we, we were able to play 
shows with a lot of different bands. So that and that was really cool. And that's that's kind of always how we did stuff in the Quad Cities anyway. Was just like, you know, you'd have a four band bill, and each band would sound completely different. You know, which sure. we thought was cool. And that's kind of the vibe of I think small town DIY scenes. Mm-hmm. You know, which mm-hmm. I think is the really same four bands. In my experience. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, you know, well, and, you know, as a promoter, too, you'd be like, you know, like, oh, what? Uh, and you will bring all the, all the teenagers out, you know? And mm-hmm. it's weird. I was talking to uh, some friends the other night about, you know, how that's, it seems so much less prevalent nowadays, like high school bands, you know? It's always just yeah. like people, people find each other in the scene and then make bands where, when we first start joined bands, it's like we were just four similar dudes in high school that were like, you know, yeah. hey, let's make music, you know. And and back then there was so much less to do, you know. I think so. I, mm-hmm. You know, part of it I think is to blame with you know kids just stare at their phones and their TikToks and their right. whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Anyway, I'm not gonna. I want to sound like <laughs> I got yeah. told, old fart but yeah. it's you know that whole that whole conversation is interesting how much like you know because our generation got to see uh how much the internet brought people together and brought music together you know you were saying the other in a different episode about myspace and how cool that was for bands mm-hmm. you know part dan was saying and part of that i think is like before that there wasn't much you know they were just the trailblazer you know mm-hmm. where it's like it was just all of a sudden this way you could all of a sudden you could make your own site and have your music and have pictures, you know, was, you know, so, you know, so we've, I think we've gone from, you know, the internet being a really cool thing and it still is, but it's just so easy to be numb to how awesome the internet is and easier yeah. to just like think about the negatives of it, you know, like, cool, kids don't like to go to punk shows anymore because of Spotify. <laughs> yeah. But there's truth to that as well, you know. No, absolutely. It it definitely has, there definitely is a change in the climate there for sure. Um, but Wait, like you said, there's still are, positives and negatives. Are we, are we just going to talk about music? I, I was under the assumption, this, is, is this a true crime podcast? Are we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, okay. Uh, so trying let's to talk- solve a specific murder or... Well, well you- yeah, I, I don't know. I did a bunch of uh, YouTube wormholing. Is that a verb? That sounded gross when I said it. Um, I went down a YouTube wormhole yesterday. (laughs) Wormholing. Rabbit Rabbit hole. Yeah, that's it. I went through a wormhole and then fell into a rabbit hole. That's what it was. There you go. Ricky Casso. He was a murderer and he was called the Acid King. And the reason I looked it up is because of that Malibu Ken song, Acid King. I was like, there's no way they just made this story up. Um, but then I found out that the song Teenage Dirtbag is also about this same satanic uh, drug-addled murderer. So that was interesting. You mean the so weedest, was... weedest Teenage Dirtbag? Yeah. Yeah. Really? That, so that was actually yeah. about a real guy who wanted to, like, listen to Iron Maiden with, like... Yeah, he, was and he lit, went out and killed people. Yeah, he killed you know, that's... someone in the town that the weedest m- man uh, grew up in. <laughs> Maybe, you know, that's also an issue with today's generation. They don't murder people right anymore. <laughs> At least not for Satan. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. you don't hear about kids wearing Iron Maiden shirts doing it anymore. And that's that's a problem. That's an issue. Yeah, let's change that. Yeah. Come on, kids. Down for it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm down. You know, I got to admit, uh, you know, guys, I, I I know it. I know this isn't a true crime podcast. Oh, I, I, was, oh, I, was, oh, I was just ready to he, switch. Well, that shoot, was, yeah. we oh, thought it was. Joke. I wrote oh. that joke. Oh. Just like, um, also, you know, like I said, I did my research, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get to uh, the Beefcast. Oh, you know? the Beefcast, yes, where we're yeah. going to, like, yell at each you know, other and stuff like that. I've got, I've got some official beef here, and it's on that oh. Corey Peak guy. You know, oh, uh, yeah. you know, What's wrong? More, hey, more like Corey Peaked. No, I'm just kidding. I love Corey. He's making oh, it, working on a music video for me right now. Nice. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, Is it off of the cool. live from apartment two? No, he made, he made that one already that I debuted. This is off, off of the, the next album I'm putting out. Nice. Oh, awesome. Is it live from apartment three? 
No, no, I, I did not. I didn't move upstairs. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering. Like, that'd be funny if that's what you... How many, how many stairs is it in your apartment building? I mean, you know, there's it's just a four fourplex, so it's maybe... I mean, I can go count. Okay, <laughs> go right ahead. The, uh, uh, I was saying that that would be an interesting concept, is if you, like, moved, like, every, like, three months, and then you made, like, an album from each floor. Like, no. literally. Yeah, totally cost-effective to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. It, it, no, I, uh, I fiscally irresponsible. I could do one from each room in my oh, apartment. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, how many rooms you got in your apartment? Live from the kitchen. Oh, my, my apartment's <laughs> uh, 18-bedroom. Uh, it's their micro-bedrooms, so. Oh, wow. So you can do uh, 18 albums. Wow. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's a two-bedroom. I... I you know, I I live here with Brandon and Pizza Squirrel, and it gets a little the quarters get a little tight, but we make it work. You know, no, I was gonna actually I was gonna ask you about Pizza Squirrel. What exactly? Who is Pizza Squirrel? We we need to know this. Well, I mean, he's uh, you know, he's a he's a punk rock squirrel. He likes pizza. You know, uh, yeah. Actually, it all started uh, you know, since you know, since uh, you know covid and all that stuff i've been sheltered in place and you know uh my my spot on the couch it's right next to this window that overlooks uh downtown moline and one day i looked out and there's this squirrel underneath my van just eating uh, like an entire slice of pizza basically (laughs) and uh you know and i see him around i mean he's still i just saw him yesterday you know he he comes and he hangs out at the tree and he like, I'll say what's up to him, and he will like sit there and look at me, like, <laughs> he for real. But then, so then a friend of mine made a sort of a, a pizza squirrel action figure, if you will. Oh. And uh, so he, you know, I, I put him in my window to try and kind of lure the other pizza squirrel. So there's a, there's hashtag real pizza squirrel, and uh, then just you know, the fake pizza squirrel. Yeah, basically, I, I've I've too much time on my hands. <laughs> It, hey, it's cool though, man. It's I I love pizzas and squirrels are okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, so that's that's not a bad thing. Yeah, you can oh. keep pizza as a pet and eat squirrels. <laughs> They'll be all set. Uh, I, I mean, stop people do, do that. <laughs> I heard that's a muscatine delicacy. Oh yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of muscatine delicacies you don't know yeah, about it's yet. It's good. No? It's like it's like rabbit. And oh, right. What what are some what are some muscatine delicacies? Uh, Ooh, now I'm well, doing you. We like uh, to eat we like to eat the ground anything the ground and watermelon and, watermelon. and snapping turtle. Yeah, and there's a squirrel. place that actually there's a place that actually does sell turtle meat every Easter. Like yeah. right, <laughs> don't right they just have a big road. ass sign that says turtle meat? <laughs> yes, and it's on off the side 20. of the highway. <laughs> Yeah, Highway 22. I yes. love that sign. Yeah, me turtle too. It's, meat. And it, it's like every Easter, like they think that everybody's going to eat turtle meat for Easter or something. Well, I mean, oh, it makes man. sense. You what know? if you what if you put a turtle what if you put a turtle meat on some pizza and then turtle a ninja turtle ate pizza. a ninja oh. turtle ate be like, "Oh man, you just cannibalized yourself." <laughs> you teenage turtle. teenage cannibal ninja turtles. Yeah. They just oh, like eat each wow. other with toppings. Not cool, yeah. turtles. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys are evil. Hey, John, I understand. Eric was not aware of this, but apparently, apparently you dressed up. Apparently you dressed up for the podcast tonight. Oh. Uh, I thought I thought we discussed that was on the uh, list of things you couldn't ask me about. Oh, oh that's right. Hey. Yes. Brandon, that was on the list, right? Yeah, he said that was on the list. Uh, but, you know, I'll go ahead. You know, hey, all access. You know, I'm not that. I'm not going to hide behind anything. Yeah, I'm wearing a, an outfit entirely comprised of uh, cow print. Oh, oh wow. Uh, you That's know, nice. it's sort of the underappreciated animal print. Everybody wants to, you know, everybody wants the exotic animals. Cheetahs, tigers, zebras. You know, just give me some cow print and just, you know, yeah. I'll go go at it, you know. So, so yeah, cow print mostly. Cow print overalls, cow print socks. You know, wow. I mean, if you're going to you go cow print, you go all the way. So and That's perfect, really, for the <laughs> Iowa beef cast that we're going to do. So. <laughs> like, hey, uh, 
Oh. I don't know if this is okay, but I'm I'm about to uh, smoke weed live on the podcast. Oh snap! Don't tell Whoa. Me. Hey, go ahead. Don't even tell the FCC because I'm in Illinois. It's legal. Uh, yeah, it's legal. Totally tubular, man. Oh, uh, really gets me in the conversation mood. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the universe, dude. <laughs> you know, if 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 I'm gonna do a podcast, I wanna I wanna also do a drug that makes my mouth really dry. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's I mean, what other way can you have it really? It's good for talking. <laughs> yeah. For talking. Do you also smoke weed when you make music at all? Uh yeah, <laughs> that was that was you, the greatest delay. To that <laughs> do you do it uh, uh, while you're writing and recording, or just one or the other of those? Uh, both. Oh, okay. so, cool. So yes, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and it, it kind of is a motivator for me. So like, I, you know, I'll, I'll get a, get a little buzz on, and and like, even when I'm like sitting watching TV, I'm like, I'm just gonna, you know smoke a little and relax and then i smoke and then i'm like you know what i should like work on something so nice. you know it, it's definitely is it's a crutch to be honest i can't <laughs> i can't do anything without it no uh well, yeah. yeah i mean anyway so now this is like a weed <laughs> a weed cast man welcome to yeah. weed cast. this is seth rogan and <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, I, I shouldn't be talking about that. We can we can edit that all out in uh, post, right? <laughs> we can. If you really, really want me to, but I'm really enjoying this content right now. <laughs> no, no that, that was another pre-prepared joke that I had. <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> I'm loving I like this, it. man. Yes. I didn't you, wear you, any yeah. animals, animal um, skins or anything. Oh, just, it's, I, I'm wearing real. Just so you guys help. know. It's oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't even wear a fake animal. Print. It's all it's all silk. It's just printed to look like a cow. Oh wow, cow silk. Hey, no, <laughs> aren't they a band? Aren't the cow silks a band? <laughs> oh yeah, they have a really good song. Um, oh dang, what was their big hit? Oh hair, remember hair? Okay, no. <laughs> no, I don't remember that at all. Did. I mean, is that is that real? Yeah. Okay. Hair. That's that's you know what that that's refreshing. I think. <laughs> I remember the uh, cow slingers. What's a cow slinger? I mean, I don't know, but I know they're a band. Is that your train, John? <laughs> that is my train. train. I cool. live I live I live about a block away from the train tracks oh, down here awesome. in downtown Moline. Oh, actually, actually, hold on a second. I got okay. I, I got I got somebody's coming, somebody's coming up the window. Hey, Bill, what's up, man? Hey, man, where's my pizza at? Bill, I'm on a podcast right now. I can't talk to you. Okay, see you later, man. Yeah, that, that's my friend, Bill. He, uh, I, I give the guy a pizza <laughs> once, you know? He, he hangs out next door for Tommy's, and he's just, uh, he's always down here. He comes to my window. He's like, ask me for pizza. Yeah, I brought you a pizza one time, Bill. He keeps coming around like a stray cat, you know, and not, not like the Brian Seltzer kind, like an actual cat. And, uh. <laughs> You know, it's like, come on, guy. But uh, but yeah, that's it's a train. I live uh, I live in downtown Moline, right next door to a bar called Tommy's. It's uh, you know, I want to give them a shout out. You know, uh, official sponsor of the uh, cast. Um, <laughs> I didn't actually, even know. I heard some ladies like arguing outside last night, Monday night at the bar. You know, and the one lady's like, the one lady's really really laying it on this other lady like oh i'm so sure you didn't hear me say oh you didn't hear me say that she keeps saying it and i'm just like the whole time i just want to yell at my window and be like what what was it you said you know, like, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm just alone in my apartment here so like anything that happens outside i'm, I'm like curious about you know so oh yeah so is there a lot of entertainment outside the bar usually I, not really but oh. i'll take a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice yeah there's probably some funny moments for sure now you mentioned earlier that that was your train so that means you own the trains that go yeah. by like you bought yeah. them can you give any um do i bought them aspiring train owners uh any advice on how to acquire trains you know never give up on your dreams you know uh <laughs> okay you know 
I've heard that you just have to stay on track. No. <laughs> like your dreams, but don't, also don't forget your nightmares. You know, those are important too. It's a yin and the yang. Whoa, I've never heard anybody say give up on your nightmares. <laughs> don't give up on your nightmares. No, I said don't forget. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, th- I thought you said don't give up on your dreams and your nightmares. Mm. No, I said don't give up on your dreams, but don't forget your nightmares. Okay. Mm. So you don't want to yeah. give up on your dreams, but you don't want to forget your nightmares. Yeah. I get yeah. it. I like it. I'm Remember doing all it. of them. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I th- actually, I think Mark Twain said that. Oh, wow. He was I, from Muscatine. I heard he lived in Muscatine for a while, right? Yeah. Yep. That is true. He wasn't that, from there, but he did live there. Well, we have, that, have a big uh, parking lot, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> By Mark, the bridge. <laughs> Mark Twain Overlook. Yeah. I believe that that's, that's why they called lived. it that. Yeah. Because he lived on the parking lot there. Oh, in, cool. In like a, a shelter or a gazebo or something at the top. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Rob mm-hmm. Ebo, that sounds pretty literary. <laughs> yeah, that's a great term. I've always liked gazebo. Yeah, it sounds like an instrument, sort of. Kind of does, yeah. But I don't know how to play. So We need to get a gazebo player for our new project. <laughs> um. Oh, man, I, you know, a gazebo player sounds more like just a dude that hangs out at the gazebo. <laughs> like, He's a oh, that's player. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, sit at this gazebo <laughs> long enough. Some some ladies are going to come along. And I'm going to be like, hey, you want to sit here at my gazebo? <laughs> <laughs> There's a plaque for some dead guy that he's pretending to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Glorious stuff. So <laughs> believe it or not. around with gazebo. Okay. Uh, everybody listen at home in a podcast, <laughs> don't try that at home. Okay. <laughs> I got to warn you, do not try the gazebo move at home. All right. No. Be, be, be uh, excellent to each other. Don't be that guy at the gazebo just trying to, you know, lay down on game on the honeys. You know, it's not a good look, you know, this is where it's the nineties, you know, don't be like that. Facts. Facts. It's the nineties for sure. (laughs) Um, so believe it or not, this podcast is still about music. Sometimes it's Uh starting to get into other gray areas and everything, you know, but let's talk tunes. Let's talk. Let's talk some tunes. So, uh, Hey John, uh, you want to talk a little bit? Uh, I, you had some interesting things to say. Um, about a month ago after we reviewed a uh, life from apartment two, um, you want to talk a little bit about the recording process and production and concepts and ideas that kind of went into this album. Well, you, you know, I'd, I'd like to say, you know, if I'm going to pick one cat living or, or cartoon, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm surprised you guys didn't bring up Snacklepuss, you know? Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. I forgot about that one. Yes. Yeah. He's a pink anthropomorphic uh, cougar. He's got the upturned collar. He's got the sassy sort of repertoire. Yeah. Uh, he is very great. I love him. He is. So, yes. that, so that's that's my that's my vote. But uh, I wish more you, than anything I could do a good Snagglepuss impression. More I don't than know. Anything. If, you know, I don't know if it's politically correct to do Snagglepuss impressions anymore because. Oh. I mean, you know, just like Foghorn Leghorn talking about, you know, the kid that can't play baseball. I think yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the snaggle puss impression basically like a like a gay Vincent Price kind uh, of yeah, character. Yeah, but um yeah. <laughs> I think it's like you have to you can't be straight and do a snaggle puss impression. Mm. But if you're if you're bi or gay or you know, or any of those pink things, cat. then, then you, or a pink cat, then you can. Okay, this is, yeah, we're, we're going to definitely need to edit that part out. Okay, uh, all right. but I would Just, trade all that in to do a really good Jinx the Cat impression. Now, that's the voice, the best cartoon voice, in my opinion. I'm not familiar ever. with Jinx this work. Uh, is he, is he, he's uh, with a um, cat or just a real, to- a real life talking cat? Well, he was on Pixie and Dixie, um, the little mice. He's most famous for saying that I hate pieces of pieces. Like I, <laughs> I hate pieces to pieces. You never heard that? 
Oh, shit. Sorry. Jinx the cat. Jinx the cat. I don't remember, we but... We had different shows down in Muscatine, man. <laughs> we also, we also didn't... We had different shows back in the yes. <laughs> That's more what happened. Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> Moving yeah. cartoons? I don't think so. Oh, uh, no. So back to music. What, what was your question, Dan? I forgot. <laughs> Something about... No, actually, let's, let's do this. Eric, ask me some... Uh, procedural questions or, or what yes. do you them as? Okay, I will. Um, we go. So mostly let's concentrate on live from apartment two. Okay. Yes. I, I did see some of those um, Facebook lives, but I couldn't really see your gear set up. Um, is a lot of the stuff sort of pre-recorded? Is it a lot of, um, like hardware or is it a lot of in the box sort of software and sequencing? Like if you had to kind of narrow down how those were presented, how, how did you do that? Well, you know, and, and you know, I've, I listened to the review you guys gave and, you know, Eric, you did, you know, may have mentioned you were right on on some things like, um, you know, that it was a little more somber and a little more sort of zoned out. And a lot of that was, um, yeah, it was a different, a different approach on writing. You know, I, I had, you know, I, the pandemic hit, you know, and I'm stuck in, in my apartment and, you know, thinking about, you know, like, okay, well, as, as, an, as a musician an artist an entertainer of sorts, you know, it's like, how do I, you know, it's like, we're, we're thinkers. So, you know, we should be working to like, continue to entertain people, you know, and not just sit at home and be like, Oh, I miss playing gigs. You know, it's like, I hate, I hate playing gigs, you know, but, uh, it's just, a, it's just a lot of work. But if I can, if I can do a live performance in my apartment, I don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, don't have to, I don't have to go home. But so basically what I, what I would do is I would just, I kind of would write everything that night. So I would start off like, you know, uh, I use Ableton on my laptop for a lot of the beats. So I would start with like, you know, come up with a beat, a drum and bass kind of groove, just a simple groove. And then that would be something that I would just sort of loop in Ableton. Mm -hmm. Then I have a, a Korg synthesizer that I use. So I have that. I have that. And then uh, this TC Helicon vocal mm -hmm. effects pedal. Okay. So, th so that's where I get the, um, you know, the vocoder sound that mm -hmm. Dan likes. And, uh, but so, so I run all of that. I run, I run it all through, uh, like a USB audio interface. Mm -hmm. And then I run that out to a PA okay. and just sort of, that's how I would do the live streams i know there's some way that you can do like a direct audio feed and i'm sure it would sound a lot better but i don't know how to do that so gotcha. but you know so as as i was recording these since i was running everything through uh my audio interface and through ableton i also just hit record at the same time so right so you know while some of it is live because it's like these live performances it's basically the only thing that's live is the lead synth and the vocals right but it's but, all know, technically live because it's that performance of that well you know, there, you know yeah and there are a couple songs on there that are ones that uh, i kind of came up with different parts and like mm -hmm. wrote lyrics and recorded the lyrics and those are a couple of the singles even but those ones were ones that i also kind of did all in one night as mm -hmm. far as like, all right let's make i'm gonna make a song tonight and i'm gonna like finish it so nice. it was kind of a bunch of different exercises and sort of impromptu sort of improvis improvisations yeah you know plus and plus part of the title is like it's not even it's it's just a play on uh you know, the pandemic kind of right. live stream concert. So, uh, you know, it's not actually live, most right. of it, you know. So it's just kind of a, a yeah. clever tool. But, you know, I uploaded it all to Spotify, and Spotify went back and tagged them all as live songs, oh, even, yeah. though, even though I punched <laughs> in that they weren't live. Hmm. Since the album's called Live from Apartment oh, okay. 2, somebody thought it was like, these are live songs. And I was just like... <laughs> 
people thanks thanks wow. Spotify. Yeah. so maybe maybe you know people maybe people will be like this sounds pretty good for being live you yeah. know so who knows <laughs> if you don't mind me asking what korg synth do you have uh it's the mini log oh yeah i love the mini log cool <laughs> I don't have much else to say. I just wanted to know. I lo- it's that kind of machine thing. is laid out so nicely. Um, it's the it's newer one of the, sort of remake of it or whatever, you know. But it's oh, the, the XD sort of, or whatever it's no, called? No, it's, there is that XD one that's like mm-hmm. a little extra. Yeah. But the one that I got is just the stripped down one, but it does everything that like the mini log originally. I think the XD, yeah. like they find some other stuff to like make it yeah i think it adds the mm, like a different sequencer maybe or something i don't know maybe a delay onboard delay and distortion i have no idea but i love the mini log i think that it's a super nice analog machine it sounds nice it has the same oscillators as the ms20 so if anyone likes that synth or they should have the same sort of sound so pretty awesome yeah yeah, it's fun to it's fun to mess around with. I you know I really even even haven't really dug into it as much as I as I should because I've you know that part of the reason for getting it was uh, you know I've been using Ableton and mm-hmm. it, you know you can get some cool sounds out of there. You could tweak them to get some cool sounds, but I wanted to have like a live instrument that I yeah. could could that I could perform with. You know because mm-hmm. I you know. Cause then it's, I think it makes things a little more interesting you know, I've done, I've done various different lineups with the live show with mm-hmm. backup dancers and, you know, you know, backup vocalists, you know, and other things like that. And, you know, it's when I'm just by myself, I'm just like kind of up there singing to, to backup tracks, you know, mm-hmm. and like, I don't know, you know, I'm, it's fun. And, you know, you know, I'm, I'm no usher, but I try to put on a good show, you know, but, uh, yeah. You know, but to, so I wanted to integrate, like, I wanted to try to start writing from this approach of like thinking about playing a synthesizer and singing right. live, you know, to sort of up, up my game, you know, for sure. Yeah. And there's a tactile element to it too. It's like, if you have a, just a controller, a, a keyboard controller, and it's running a soft synth or whatever. Like you can't, you have parameters that it's going to be hard to get outside of. But with a real analog synth, you can turn some knobs and have it go really poorly and get really wild. And like, it's like punk rock, you know, like it takes those sort of bumpers off and you can, I don't know. I think I love watching people play, um, live and a lot of times yeah if they're just kind of running a laptop or something it you know you kind of want a little bit more out of them but oh yeah yeah yeah, sure sure. you know so that's that's part of it you know and unfortunately i've you know then kind of you know i bought the synth and then uh, you know everything happened with uh right pandemic so but that's fine you know it's weird it's weird because i've gotten so used to doing these live streams like the idea Mm -hmm. of doing like I did, I did it, actually, I did a couple gigs live from the apartment. I did one for, there's a, there's this place locally, uh, Handicap Development Center that, uh, mm-hmm. that a bunch of my friends work at, that they have, they work with, it's just kind of a, a recreational center for people with various handicaps and mm-hmm. developmental issues, but they, uh, I, I went there a couple years ago and taught an art class, and then... Cool. This this year they st- they had to suspend uh, their their in person activities, mm-hmm. you know. So they're all kind of they still have their, their caretakers go out to the to their houses and hang out. And mm-hmm. So I was able to do. They started doing Zoom activities. So I did a, a live concert oh, via cool. Zoom. That was pretty cool, you know. Like there, I you know, and I've become friends with a lot of these folks. Like they come into the record store and stuff, and you know, like I said, I, I I'm friends with a couple of people that work there and mm-hmm. so it's pretty cool because you know they're all just super super music and and anything really so but yeah it's just weird thinking about so i have done some gigs with the uh live synth but that's that's mm-hmm. about it you know i i have cool. like not, not live in person but right. live via 
the wonders of the internet. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, as, as, like I said before with artists and musicians, it's like, there's, you know, there's so much technology out there. And I think this, if we can learn one thing, one of many things from, from the last year is like how we can better use technology to, to really communicate with each other, you know, Mm -hmm. as opposed to like, you know, using technology to like hate each other, you know? Yeah, for sure. Anyway, I just think that's, I just think that's really refreshing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's actually, you brought up, um, you know, that you, uh, taught an art class there. And that's actually one thing also that I wanted to touch on a little bit is of course you have the YouTube channel, John Burns video, and you've done a lot of like, uh, kind of short films and videos and stuff like that. Um, so you're also a visual artist, and, uh, you know, I see a lot of your artwork being posted on your Instagram and Facebook. Um, have you always kind of, uh, integrated like both of those things, like both the like music side and the art side together kind of, or were you kind of involved in one before the other, or how did that, how did that kind of come about, you know, where, uh, you s- kind of were involved in the visual element of things as well as the, uh, audio side of things uh well yeah um <clears throat> great question dan um you know uh i think uh you know as when i was a kid before i ever really thought about being a musician i've always wanted to be an artist so you know as as long back as i can remember i i, I wanted to be an artist you know i carried around a binder with my drawings of like ricky henderson and michael jordan and stuff you know mm-hmm. but uh you know, and that went, that followed into junior high and high school. And then, you know, like got into music and started a band and, you know, art kind of goes hand in hand with, with music and promoting shows. Cause you're, you know, designing the artwork for your albums or designing a flyer, you know, and even, you know, and I should say, you know, my buddy, Dennis Hockaday that I, I've been friends with him since junior high and we were in sure. Mexico together uh, we work together at the record store now. Um, you know, he was the same way. So we all throughout Meth and Goats, we were all, we were both kind of art, art and music collaborators coming up with things, you know, and, you know, as even before we were out of high school, we were booking shows and like doing small sort of art shows at these punk rock shows where people, we'd talk to friends and they'd bring artwork and we'd try and spread the artwork because you know back then it was it wasn't as easy you know back then it was like like pre uh how engaged and everybody was communicating together on social media you know so Mm -hmm. back then it was like as a young artist it was hard to get into the art scene around here because it was kind of like everybody that knew each other were already doing shows so doing art shows so it was it was cool to like did we so we came from the sort of DIY sort of outsider art sort of thing, you know, which, you know, other, you know, I, we, I grew up with Johnny Clooney, you know, the artist sure. Trotter and, sure. uh, you know, he played, he played in Mondo drag with Dennis for a while and stuff, you know? And so, you know, he was a similar, another person that, you know, we did, there used to be this gallery, uh, where it, right now it's just an open grass field, but it was across, across from where the ragged records is at in rock Island mm-hmm. and where Roz Tox is at, there used to be, it's called the peanut gallery, you know, and we used to, we used to do art shows here and there at that spot because they were like, it was ran by this older couple that were just kind of weirdo artsy folk, you know? So, Mm -hmm. but yes, you know, it's always gone hand in hand for me. And, uh, you know, I, I like that too, because, you know, it always, I always have something to work on. So, and, and I always have, I can pivot back and forth to where, you know, because sometimes, you know, if you're working on a certain song or working on mixing an album or anything, really working on a music video or working on a painting, sometimes you got to you got to take a break, take a step back and sort of digest what you've done and sort of and then you can come back at it fresh. So, mm-hmm. you know, being a creative person that that has sort of their hands in a lot of different things i think that really helps i know i mean i know it helps me Mm -hmm. to just keep things fresh because then you're not just like having more than one output is is good for an artist i think you know so sure and they probably inform the they probably inform each other as well you know 
like you'll get an idea. Um, at least this is how it works for me. Like sometimes I'll get an idea of what I'll want something to sound like. I'll create sort of an atmosphere in my head of what I want a song to sound like or whatever. And I might even draw it or paint it or, you know, whatever to try to actually put myself there. I don't know if you do that sort of thing or not, but just things feed off of each other and inform each other. I don't know. Yeah. Here. Well, that's like with music. If you, if you're working on, if you're like, say you're trying to finish these lyrics or you're trying to finish, you're mm. trying to come up with a, that last part for a song, you know, it's like if you work on it and you listen to it too long or when you're mixing music, you know, it's, mm. I mean, that can be a really headache because you listen to a song over and over again. And, you know, so to be able to take a step back from it, sometimes you get you get that sort of, you know. It's just your ears are worn out on it, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds perfect the night before and you go to bed and get up and it's like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. You <laughs> are you just get the point where like, what am I even listening right. to? What am I doing yes. with my life? You know, like, <laughs> or, you know, and sometimes same thing with visual art. Sometimes with the painting, I'll get to a certain point where, you know, which, which I like, uh, which is important to have a good studio space. And I do all my art, uh, in my apartment now. And mm -hmm. so I have like, kind of, I will hang up random pieces that are like not even finished, not even close to be finished mm -hmm. just to sort of look at them and like say, okay, what does this need? What, what makes this better? You know? Should I should I stop now? Is it done now, or should I continue to work on this? You know, interesting story. Like pre pandemic, I had some people over after the bar one night, and like some. Actually, this is, I had a I used to have a roommate. I live by myself now, but my roommate had all these people over. Brought all these people over, then went back to the bar, left me alone with these people. <laughs> and this one guy's like, this one guy's like, yeah, I don't know. This piece right here, I think it's just I don't. It needs something else. And I'm like, my God, well, that's. <laughs> I was like, that's my studio space. So I, I hang stuff up just to look at it to like see, you know, to sort of uh, marinate on it. And he's like, I just think it needs something, something. And he kept going at it. And like, I was already annoyed. So I got to the point where I was like, yeah. hey, dude, I didn't ask you. <laughs> and like, I kind of snapped on it. And then and then he was like all apologetic. Like, oh, I really like it. It's really good. <laughs> actually, I think it, actually, I think it is finished. And I'm like, no, it, it's, it's not finished. <laughs> I just, I didn't ask you your opinion. Right. Yeah. But, Are you a fan of Rocky Horror Picture Show by chance? Um, yeah, I've seen it. The only reason I bring it up is um, there's one moment where Tim Curry is Dr. Frankenfurter. Someone says that his creation, Rocky, is okay. And he's like, okay, I didn't make him for you. <laughs> and, I, and I always <laughs> love it because, like, it applies to art so much. It's like, how are you going to tell me what my art needs? Like, that's total insanity like yeah you know yeah Anyways. you know it's i've you know as making visual art over the years i've kind of you know at least around the quad cities grown grown a little more popular and like mm -hmm. so I, I now i get like i even get like random commission requests from people oh. that i don't that i don't know you know mm -hmm. and then it's like then they want yeah, I, f I hate that shit, you know, it's like, I, I just, I would rather just, I want to make art that I want to make. And then once it's done, I want to be like, Hey, you, anybody want to buy this? Right. right. Sometimes right. people like, you know, like I did this, I did this portrait of, especially like when people want portraits of their kids or their pets, I'm like, mm. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Cause uh, like I did this portrait yeah. of this girl's, this girl's kids and this woman's kids. And she, email me back and was like i showed it to my mom and she she thinks there's something weird going on with like the collar area of <laughs> just like oh okay you know and like at first my first reaction was like how dare you but then yeah. but then but then i looked at it and i was like shit your mom's right you know and, <laughs> and so I, I fixed it you know and i i i wrote her back and she was like she felt really bad about it. she's like i'm sorry i shouldn't have said anything i was like I was like, no, your mom was right. And, you know, if if I can do a little bit of work to keep your mom or any mom on this earth happy, <laughs> I'll do it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, so, you know, you fix the collar and you're keeping the money. So whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Actually, it was a it was a, a portrait for a fundraising thing. I was oh, doing. OK. Oh, mm. gotcha. 
I wasn't well, that's... financially gaining from it. Oh, that's <laughs> that's still a that's still especially that that's still a great attitude to have, John. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you for um, I mean, it just, it just looking makes out me for has... looking out for the moms. It makes me hesitant to do those sort of consignment yeah. jobs, like where people have expectations, you know. And I, I yeah. ran into that with uh, you know making music videos for bands too, where like uh, you know sometimes sometimes they'll you know I'll I'll spend a and I've talked to Corey a little bit about this because he's been getting more and more into making music mm-hmm. videos, and it's right. like. It's a pretty like lengthy process to try and animate something, and then like you get this thing done, and you think it's great, and you show it to the to the band or the musician, and they're like, "I don't know, could you change like this part and this part, mm-hmm. and like this part be a little different?" And they don't realize that it's like, "Okay, but you're talking about me going back and redoing." It's like that's like right fifteen hours of work, you know, like, right. and I'm charging you like a friend rate, mm-hmm. you know, right. right. Yeah, it's not just changing something. It's you have to create something new. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's because uh, you know, in the the visual art, fine arts world, as an artist, you get pulled into that sort of mm-hmm. way more easier than a musician. You know, it's like you don't start a band and then like next week some like business is like write me a jingle, but it's got to be yeah. a certain way, you know? right? right. Which I mean, for the record, for the listeners at home, if you have a business, I will write you a jingle. You know. Um, oh, that's my ultimate dream. Well, I have two ultimate dreams: cartoon voiceover, at work, and jingle writer. Yeah, I mean, I was, oh my god, what a life! Yeah, the uh, cartoon voiceover is one of my dreams too, actually, Eric. <laughs> that, seriously, I've always wanted to do voiceover work. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do. Uh, I'll give a. I'll do a call back to the Corey Peak episode. You know, he's got that one guy on the podcast that hasn't said anything. Um, yeah. I'm surprised when you were interviewing him, you weren't like, "I'll do it." Well, you know, I didn't want to push myself too much. No, but, that's you have to. But if he on. listens to this, no, yeah, I'm in. I mean, there you, you go. I would be. In. Corey, yeah. can I get you on air to promise? <laughs> right, you're right. God, I blew I'm it. Avoid this character. In whatever place I want to do, I blew Snag- it. I blew my opportunity right there. You snagglepuss voice. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, Jinx yeah. the cat. <laughs> Jinx the yes, cat. this is a great blackened metal song. <laughs> he only comments on metal music. You know. Yeah. Everything else is beneath him. I mean, come on. Me and Dennis were talking about. You know, like I said, Dennis Akaday, my buddy. Uh, I work at the record store with. He's my BFF. Uh, we he was we were talking about like the blackened is sort of this new genre description thing. I mean, I don't know if that Eric, you're a big metal guy. Does that date back further than just somewhat recently? Oh, like uh, blackened death metal and things like yeah, that. You've heard it's like oh, it's like blackened screamo, you know, or whatever. Sure. Yeah, I think, and I mean, someone that's actually in the metal will probably tell me I'm completely wrong, but my understanding of it is that it takes a form of music usually metal and then it adds a couple of elements from black metal so like black and death metal would also have like the the screaming and possibly even some like orchestral synth um elements and things like that so that's like black and death metal although the rest I like of the music's it. like death metal so i like it because it's a way to add into your your genre explanation that it has black <laughs> influences without right. making it sound like it's a black death metal band. Like, Oh, it's a bunch of black dudes. Cool. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I, 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 my favorite description, uh, is the, uh, black and roll. Like, have you ever heard that one? No. What's that? So like, that's like, I don't know. I guess people call venom that kind of now. Cause call- you know how the, you know how like Venom kind of like started black metal, but not really. Mm, yeah. Like they started the aesthetics of it anyway, but their music is more like sounds like a darker version of Motorhead or whatever. Uh, okay. So like dark. Man, film... I, I saw that movie with Macaulay Culkin's brother, but I don't know. Oh, the Lords, the Lords of Chaos. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> that was, yeah, man. Sorry. That was. I interrupt you. Continue. <laughs> anyway, so I was yes, saying sir. like continue. I know that uh, Dark Throne changed their style 
um, like in the 2000s or something like that, and they released a bunch of albums that basically sounded like Motorhead. Mm. And they those albums, I think, were referred to as like black and roll. So it's like rock and roll mixed with like yeah. black metal uh-huh. vocals. I like it. Okay. I thought you were saying blackened roll. <laughs> I, I'm, like it might be that. You left in the know. oven too long. Oh, I thought you were saying black and grohl. I thought it was like the new (laughs) Foo Fighters direction. Dave Dave Grohl is a black... Foo Fighters is a black metal band now. Speaking of uh, Dave Grohl, Dennis sent me a link to this. uh, Dennis is all about the uh, finding the cool YouTube music documentaries, just like you guys. You guys are into that? But he sent me... Let me see it. Yep. He sent me this thing. I'll just send you guys the link, but it's... uh, why am I doing this? A film about touring. Oh yes, I was actually just watching that today. But in the description, it says, uh, like right in like the first sentence of the description, it says 100% Dave Grohl free. Yeah, <laughs> that's like that's, that's like the first line of the. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Is it's that because a... of that show on HBO or whatever? The probably the where they just showed them kind of fake yeah. touring. Yeah. I mean, I okay. I got respect for Dave Grohl. It, it's completely possible for somebody to be cool at one time and then eventually not be cool anymore. You know, yeah. I don't know. You know, I mean, he's uh, he's up there with the Foo Fighters. He's I don't know, he's like chewing gum. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he does. He is the gum chewer. It's, it's really, part of his personality. Yeah. There's like, why is is he chewing gum? <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's just unprofessional. You're here to play a gig. You know, spit the gum yeah. out. You know, at least smoke a cigarette while doing so. Yeah, a yeah, gum chew, cigarette. Chew yeah. gum and smoke a cigarette. Yeah, they're uh, uh, you know, the band guided by voices. Mm-hmm. Is that there, what he does? There's a live performance where <laughs> the guitarist is like this punk. He he's actually the most punk looking dude in the entire band, like tattoos, and he's wearing like some sort of leather thing, like that looks like he should be attending a Harley show or something like a motorcycle show he's like the only and you've heard guided by voices right Mm -hmm. so their music doesn't sound really particularly punk but anyway he's chewing gum and smoking cigarettes and playing a guitar at the same time (laughs) that's pretty cool yeah i gave up i gave up gum though so i I had to quit yeah i've been two two packs a day (laughs) gum is bad for your health yeah I do a juicy every every now and again, juicy, you know. Juicy. You know, hey, the taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move you, you know. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. 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 yeah, juicy fruit, man. Yeah, that oh, you. Uh, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Were you gonna uh, talk about fruit stripe gum? <laughs> no. no. We're going back. What about blackjack gum? I'll talk. Hey, if we gotta get back to beef cast, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, big red gum. Big red gum, get out of here. Get yeah. out of here. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're too I, wide and flat. Give me dentine. I like yeah. little, <laughs> first little just, bricks. That, what's it even supposed to taste like? I don't even understand. Big red, you know. Just red. Yeah. It tastes it red. Tastes like the color red. You it's guys remember those that gross? Bread. The you guys, you guys remember the gross soda gums they used to have? Like uh, A&W root beer and Dr. Pepper gums back in the 80s? Yeah. Yeah. Were they like gushers sort of? Yeah, they were like gushers. They like gushed out like this. I like the Seven Up one. I think. Yeah, there was a Seven Up one too. I remember that. I was uh, I was big on the RC Cola one. Mm. I don't remember I the RC Cola one because <laughs> I I think I just made that up. Um, oh. <laughs> but no, I do remember like here. <laughs> I remember the root beer one, yeah. and the Dr Pepper one. I mean, great, great gums. I kind of you know, liked the Dr Pepper for real. That's good. I think yeah. uh, they did a Coca Cola history, a Coca Cola one. I think so. Yeah, I guess that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> the iconic like white cursive. You know, you know, growing up, I didn't like mainstream sodas like Coke. You know, it's like whatever. What did you I know? like? The underground ones like Shasta, Shasta. I was like, I was like Mr. Pib. He's cool. You know, <laughs> put it in your head. Right? Isn't that what he used to say on the bottles? Put what it in it your head, Mr. Pib. 
put it in your head? I don't know. I like it. That's like that, but it really happened, guys. That's fantastic. <laughs> we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna have to talk to Barb, uh, and you know, she's gonna have to fact check that uh, Barb that works for the podcast. Um, she does all our fact checking, uh, you know. So we we might have to post a retraction on that one, uh, guys. <laughs> um, I used to really like fake other even more fake Dr. Peppers, like Dr. Thunder. Dr. Pretty Thunder. Good. Dr. Dr. Lightning. <laughs> Dr. Wait, Rocket. Mountain there's Lightning. There's oh, whole, Mountain Lightning. Whole, that's right. We used to go to, uh, <laughs> there used to be, there used to be a, a, a Kmart in Rock Island that is now, uh, they converted to storage units, indoor storage units. But, for a while, this Kmart had the own inside of it was the only existing Little Caesars in the Quad Cities. Oh, so wow. we would go there as teenagers and get crazy bread and then hit up the. Then they had a, a row of 25 cent pop machines outside. Whoa. So it was all about Dr. Rocket or maybe it was <laughs> Dr. Thunder. I mean, Dr. I think Rock. it was Dr. Dr. Rocket, crazy bread, you know, and then it's just like, you know, I'm pretty. I was pretty nostalgic for Crazy Bread. I tried it recently. It's it's not very good, you know. Uh, <laughs> what you got to do is, if you ever go get Crazy Bread, take it home, pop it in the toaster oven for about ten minutes. Oh, then it's good. It's always like gummy and soft. It's yeah, soft it's kind of like it's like overly buttered with whatever chemical thing that they're putting on there. Well, they just didn't cook it long enough. It's like basically like raw dough, you know. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever had any food that was good that had crazy in the name. <laughs> I tried uh, to eat crazy glue. Well, I don't know if you guys saw, but bad. Dom brought back the Noid. Uh, really? This really? Is, this is big news in my, my in my group chat about, um, uh, you know. <laughs> is Noid, it a pizza it's, group? <laughs> uh, no. No, oh. but it might as well be. You know, a lot of experienced <laughs> pizza former pizza workers. You know, I worked for 20 years in the pizza industry myself, and I got to say, you know, yeah, I have some opinions on it. You know, this new campaign that Domino's is doing is, um, and I don't know if they really have these things, but it's basically these robot cars that are delivering pizzas, and the, the Noid is trying to, like, disrupt them. And I don't know if, like, so the Noid, I mean, he's all dressed in red, so I don't know if he's, like, working, he's for the workers or what. You know, he's trying to get rid of these robot, these elite robot delivering pizza cars. And he's trying to, like, say, no, musicians still need side jobs, you know, so. (laughs) Is he still, like, claymation? The Noid? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it looks pretty legit, like, old school. The Noid. I mean, it's, yeah, it's original recipe Noid. I mean, he's the same old Noid. So they wow. can still find work for stop motion animators, but not police, uh, pizza delivery guys. <laughs> They're like, let's find robots for this part. I actually, yeah. I was, I was stoned, and I got really involved in in creating a centaur noid, <laughs> uh, stop. And then, like halfway through, I was like, what am I even doing? <laughs> I, did I just put a captain's hat on the noid? You know? Oh, I thought you meant a horse body. No, I. No. Uh, Oh, I'm okay. in this. I'm in this. I make music under the name Centarna. Uh, <laughs> but it's not a centaur. It, it's not. Honestly, it's not. Oh, okay, I didn't know. I, 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 I assumed. So, you know that you shouldn't when do you, that. When you say Captain's Hat, do you mean Captain Crunch? Uh, no, I do not. Damn. Okay. Thanks for asking, but no. I wanted. I just had to know. Uh, you know, interesting. Little uh, side story. Uh, my friend Nick, that played guitar and sang in Tri Lambs, was the original drummer in Meth and Goats. He he claimed to have had a dream about Oops All Berries before it was an actual cereal. Oh wow! Oh wow! So he was oh. prophetic. So he lives in Chicago now, and he's he he's a dog walker, but he claims to have sort of conjured the Oops All Berries cereal. So oh, like brought wow. it into reality. I think, well, I mean, mind. he, he said he had a dream about it before it showed up and then it showed up. So I don't know if, I don't know, you know, I, I haven't talked to him for a while. I have to see if, if he's had similar dreams recently where, you know, where he like. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups with nuts. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> like involved in it. Or oh, Reese's peanut butter cups with Reese's pieces. You know, Reese's that exists. That that's so yes. good. Well, so does yeah. the nuts one too. Really, I've never had the nuts. Yeah. They, you know, I I I've been I've been in my apartment for a year, and all of a sudden, you know, my mom. I talked to my mom on the phone. She's like, "You see this new Reese's peanut butter cups? It's got a, it's got marshmallows on it." And I'm like, "All right, I got it." My mom's stuck at home. I gotta go find her this elusive Reese's peanut butter cup. I go to the I go to Walgreens, you know, where I get where I got my my vaccine. You know, I get my vaccine. I get my get my sweets. So <laughs> there's like an entire Reese's aisle of like there's Reese's with pretzels, Reese's with Reese's pieces. There's, you know. They've really stepped up their game, and hey, I don't blame them. There's like Reese's, there's like peanut butter, like no, like a uh, like wafer Reese's, yeah, which yeah. are basically like Nutty Buddies, yep, or that's whatever. That's pretty much what they what they're like, mm. you know. And I was just like, what, you know? So, and I mean, they, they didn't they have. They the- couldn't ride that ET popularity forever, <laughs> but, <laughs> <No>. but my, <laughs> that's true. My take on the marshmallow ones is. I, I don't like it because I saw the pictures and I was like, is this like a fluffy marshmallow thing? <laughs> but no, it's like a solid, like, to me it tastes like too synthetic. Like it's a weird synthetic marshmallow hmm. where I want, I like, you know, I like the Easter egg chocolate marshmallows where it's like, a li- like it's the foamy marshmallow. That's yeah. what I want. So, uh, you know, if we can, I don't know if, uh, Hey, I don't know if you guys are listening. Reese's, uh, Edward, Edward James Reese, uh, or <laughs> you guys are tuning in today. Uh, yeah. You know, give me a Reese's cup with a fluffy marshmallow. Mm. I mean, you I know, you didn't... already. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say he already uh, on the um, food that built America on the History Channel. Mm. Like he already talked about all of his inventions there. there so I don't know why he couldn't invent that. Who Eric did? Edward no, no, no. Edward, Edward, Edward Reese. There's, uh-huh. there, there's this show on History Channel that uh, Wait, I always Edward bring up. Edward Reese is real. <laughs> oh, I, I made that name up. Edward James Reese. I just took Edward James almost and replaced yeah. it. No, no, no. He so he's it was real. Edward James almost. <laughs> uh, Eddie Jim. Eddie Jim. No, no. You you, you said it, so you made <laughs> oh, him. You made him real, John. Oh my God. Okay. Guys, stop yeah. thinking of things. We're going to have a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man situation here in a minute. If I can uh, interrupt you guys, we're going to get back on track here. <laughs> Thanks. No way. Thanks for, being on. Thanks for being on the podcast. Uh, Very welcome. Uh, I wanted to talk about was... Um, and me you can and Dennis, find me at centaurnoir.bandcamp.com. <laughs> me and Dennis have talked about this, and you know Talbot and other guys from Ethical, it's like, how much... Muscatine has an influence on Iowa music throughout the past two decades. So let's go. Let's go through the list. Who else from Muscatine? Obviously, you guys are both from Muscatine, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Then you got Corey. You know. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, then if you're branching out, Brooks Strauss, right? Right. Yeah. Sean Reed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, who else is from from Muscatine? That uh, I know a lot of you guys all moved out. No, yeah, Kester. No, Kester. No, oh yeah, the, the Kester Bros. Yeah, yeah, both both Sam and Noah, and then um, so those guys. Travis Munston. Um, trying to think of who else. There's a lot. MJ Dunlap, but I'm not. Do you know who MJ Dunlap is, John? No. He uh, used to play in a band called Burn Ends. Uh, they probably played up in the Quad Cities a couple times. I know they had uh, humans. They played with humans a couple of times. So you know, you, yeah, I don't know. Want to go further, further down from Muscatine, even like Burlington, Keokuk, that south, yeah, something in the water down there in uh, southeastern Iowa. You know, I think mm. that <clears throat> you know, yeah, I, we're I we're a bunch of uh, because to me it reminds me of sort of a smaller version of the Quad Cities, where it's like mm. we're all kind of out here on our own sort of doing our own thing and it, yeah. it makes kind of weird and unique you know yeah because i mean who, who else who else are some muscatine folk from like our general mm, well I mean, um cover? You, you have i mean there's a lot of younger kids that 
you know, or sort of like, I don't know, do you know, like Blake Daly from, um, uh, well, he's now in Flash in a Pan. Like, yeah, does that ring a bell at all? Uh-uh. I'm probably too old. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, there's a band right now in Muscatine called Eugene Levy that's making some waves. Yeah, yeah I've seen, I've checked them out. I mean, do uh, they know that that's also a popular actor's name? <laughs> oh, you're right. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah. yes, wow. they are aware. Uh, <laughs> they, do I'm, you think I'm the sure. name for the band before his before their show got really huge? And now they're like, damn it. It was hip and cool, but now it's so mainstream. <laughs> he won like a TV Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> you That's know. I, yeah. Bet that, I bet they regret it a lot. Actually, uh, back in the day, we had I had an idea for a Led Zeppelin tribute band called When the Eugene Levy Breaks. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but, nice. you know, I mean, without getting Eugene on board, where you know, where do you go with the band, really? You know? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Oh, it, um, would, it would just be him sort of on stage nervously singing Robert Plant's <laughs> lyrics, you know. A <laughs> um, couple names come to mind now also. Uh, Jeff Carl. Um, oh, Jeff Carl. I saw him over you, the end. You can't forget Jeremy oh. Anderson and... Um, uh, I think Connor might is Connor yeah. from Connor and Jay Bird. Is he from Muscatine? Are you sure? We're gonna have to get Barb on. We're gonna have to fact check though. <laughs> what yeah, Jeremy he's from Muscatine? Yeah, he's from Muscatine. Uh, Jeremy Anderson. Jeremy Anderson from Connor and Jay Bird. The Jeremy Anderson from Muscatine. The Jeremy Anderson. Yes, he was. I, in hate a- be, I hate to be a birther, but we're gonna have to check his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, uh, is it says Muscatine General Hospital? Oh uh, well, yeah. If you want to get technical, maybe. <laughs> no, uh, no. Connor, Connor, and his brother Jake, the Lyle brothers. That uh, Jake, <laughs> Jake played, Jake played bass in Connor and Jaybird. He's not in the band anymore, but he. Okay. They're both they're both Moline Moline dudes. Okay, they're Moline dudes, and then uh, I think Bryson. I have to fact check that one. So what about Bryson? Where's Bryson from? Bryson. I think he's Muscatine. I think I think two of the members of Condor and Jaybird are Muscatine, my friend. Oof, Bryson. Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard, but they're going to build a bridge for him up here in the Quad Cities. The Bryson Bridge, I heard yeah. about. Really? The Bryson Bridge, huh? Oh, I guess I guess you guys didn't get wind of that. It's it, That was a joke. but uh, mm. Is it the, the Bison Bridge? Yes. But Dan, you are familiar, all right? That's <laughs> why didn't you laugh? That was a hilarious joke. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm to, laughing they're, now. They're 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 putting in a new I-74 bridge, which is in the Quad Cities, but they're also replacing the I-80 bridge, which is further up that it connects Leclerc and Port Byron. It's also where they do the Tug Fest every year. Well, okay. You guys hear about the Tug Fest? I haven't had uh, a good Tug Fest since middle school. I know. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> they're going to replace that bridge, and this guy that's like this leading uh, conservationist slash, he's a CNN hero, Chad Pagraki. He's uh-huh. from here in the Quad Cities. He started an organization called Living Lands and Waters. Mm-hmm. And they basically travel on a barge up and down the Mississippi River and just pull. I mean, I think at, at the last measurement, they pulled like over a million pounds of trash out of the river. Wow. But he's got this idea to turn the old bridge into this land, this living land bridge mm-hmm. where, animal, where animals can be like, fuck this, I'm getting out of Iowa, I'm going to Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, apparently it's legal there's there. There's gonna be bison. Yeah, it's just all all animals looking to smoke up, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a, it's a cool idea, you know. And yeah, yeah. Power to yeah. them. I made I made a goofy Photoshop that I said uh, something about the Bryson Bridge and mm. <laughs> the picture of Bryson. Yeah, Bryson from Connor and Jaybird. He's a sweetheart. Uh, uh, he's he's a great guy. He does. Guy. Uh, I saw him just post today. He does drum lessons out of the. Uh, the Quad City Rock Academy, which is at mm-hmm. the River Music Experience, right? So mm-hmm. he's finally he's finally just doing uh going back to I think doing some sort of in person drum lessons and stuff. Yeah, 
which is pretty important. You know, I saw, I saw during the pandemic, he was doing live streams and he had the setup where he had his laptop on top of a speaker where the laptop was almost entirely closed just so that his webcam could get like a bird's eye view of his drum kit. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the kind of ingenuity that uh, us creative people need to, to do. Like, you know, <laughs> hey, we got to get the right angle yeah. so I can show you a little baba da baba da baba da ga. You know, <laughs> that's Baba. Yeah, da 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 da. teach the kids. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a. Uh, I mean, it's a standard drum fill. <laughs> you can ask Bryce. I I'll have to ask Bryson next time I see him. Yeah. Da 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 da. Wow. Oh, but back to Jeff Carl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jeff's Jeff's just he's one of those guys who I just want to squeeze every time I see him. He's a, like, he's. A, He's a sneaky guy. I didn't, you know, because the pandemic, I didn't see him for about six months. Then he showed up to one of our courtyard sales at Ragged, and uh, he's wearing a mask. You know, we're just hanging out. Then, like later on, I he randomly took his mask off in the distance, and I noticed he had just this great mustache. Yeah. And, you know, so I, Jim. Later, I was like, Jeff, you were hiding that mustache all day. <laughs> like, and I, I, I'm willing to bet Jeff was like. He just loved it because he just like has it. He's like, I've got a secret. <laughs> and the way you just. Bushy mustache. You know, nobody knows what your facial hair looks like. If, I mean, unless you're one of those guys with just a huge beard exploding out of your your uh, mask. Yeah. Which is Eric, some of Eric, the time. You've got a big beard right now. What, what are you, Eric, what are you rocking? Uh, facial hair? I, I keep it pretty trim. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I I sculpted a chin out of it, but no, not too bushy, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty presentable these days. I don't know. It's weird. That uh, you gotta impression. Keep, you gotta keep it kind of. <laughs> gotta what? Gotta keep it short to, you know, keep the mask all in line. Yeah. Hey, I, I think, I don't know if you guys want to do a, 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 a podcast first. Oh, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> that is uh, the first. How one. about that for a live stream? I like a live stream. Good. Hear that? Here, hold on. I'll give you guys a round sound. Oh. <laughs> and I had some asparagus earlier. That stinks. Is it green? No, you know, I've actually I just started a new diet on Monday, so we're looking pretty good, you know. Good. Dropping, dropping, uh, dropping a lot of the carbs. Cool, cool. So you're yeah, doing the whole carb on. thing, huh? Well, you know, uh, I think you know, in this since the pandemic, I've been doing, I've been doing grocery pickup for the last year, but I've also just kind of fell, fallen in routine of like. Well, I'm doing my part by staying, but for self-care, I need to just, like, eat really shitty food, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, oh, I I'm with you. i been for about four years, and I've just slowly to being, like, the most unhealthy vegetarian. It's like, <laughs> it's like, however I can cook a potato, let's do it, you know, so. <laughs> so, but I've, 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 I just start, just starting Monday, I gave up, I gave up potatoes, White pasta, okay. white rice, white bread. You're out of here. You know, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. You know, I've, I've been put, I've put on a, you know, I put on the COVID-19, you know, and it's all my belly. Yes. So I look like, you know, um, you know, I got this, I still got skinny legs and then I'm just like, you know, I, you know, honestly, I don't really care what I look like. I just want to feel better. So, you know, I just right. want to, I, I want to, I want to definitely hey, sympathize with that. Maybe if I eat a bunch of fruits and vegetables and whole wheat grains, like maybe I'll feel better, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? Mostly about clothes. Like I've, I bought a bunch of clothes, um, before the school year started. Cause it was a new job. For me at the school district and I was excited and I totally fatted out of all of those new clothes <laughs> like quick you know it was the clothes were kind of smallish like they had about a four pound fat out threshold and I blew that way out of the water so 
I don't want to buy new clothes, so I just have I, to I, fit back button, into those. I've got these button-up shirts that there's a certain button that just magically comes on button. <laughs> Like, yep. I'm, like, I'm, like I'm trying to undress myself. <laughs> I'm trying to undress myself, but belly first, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Been no, there. I love my body. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so, let's talk about some music. Okay, so Centaur Noir. Yeah. Uh, live from Apartment <laughs> 2, you know? Yeah, we loved it. It was, so it was fantastic. Hey, um. Uh, John, I have a question for you. Oh, uh, where the listeners who do not know of this Centaur Noir or any of your past music, where can they find you and your musics mm. on the internets? Freaking everywhere, bro. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Bandcamp. You can go to YouTube, Napster, Livewire. I'm on. You know, I think I still got a MySpace page somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's I, I go through this distributor that hooks me up with places I've never heard of. Shazam. Uh, you know. Wait, that's a movie. Did um, you know that? It's a wonderful movie. Shazam. Wonderful I'm, movie. I'm on I'm on this website called. Uh, Some people think it doesn't exist. I'm on this website called late night cool Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's a, a good great one. place. Right. Great place. Dan, you're on the right. Late night cool cat. <laughs> Late night, cool cat. Wait, That's Dan, what are you talking about, Kazam? No, I was talking about. You're Shazam. trying to trick me again. <laughs> There's yes. no goddamn Shazam. There God. is no Shazam. I searched for hours. <laughs> Did it, oh, I'm, I'm well, you referring. remember the movie still, don't you? No, it's Kazam, and it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah, where uh, Sinbad is a like Gen- a <laughs> genie slash magician. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. Except and that, he's, <laughs> and he's got like a sidekick that's played by Steve Harvey. Bernstein no. Bears spelled with an E. See, the problem is though, was it Sinbad? It's Shaquille O'Neal. You guys are fucking with me. Oh man, I'm moving into one of these Howie Mandel effects. Yeah. I don't know. I don't uh, know Howie Mandel. It's effect. where you put. It's where you put like a rubber glove over your head, and you get deprived from oxygen long enough <laughs> that you forget things. Wow. Yeah, it's called the Howie Man. <laughs> you know it. That's amazing. Oof. We're gonna you know, have to. We're gonna I, have real to though. That. Shaq rapping in Kazam is really good. Um, and I'm sad that it gets overshadowed by this fake Shazam movie. <laughs> Wowzy! His raps are super good in the movie. Wow, I'm so, gonna have to check that out. Sam? You should. Everyone should. <clears throat> So, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, like I said, you know, Centaur Noir, I'm sort of, you know, I'm working on my fan base. You know, I, I respond to, if you send me a fan letter, I will respond to, to that fan letter. You know, whether it's an email fan letter, if they have electronic fan letters, and then real life fan letters, I respond to those too. Uh, wow. You know, no, uh, no, but with all seriousness, I, you know, uh, to talk about music i am gonna release a new album this month cool it's called memoirs two it's a return to memoirs one which i actually just called memoirs at the time ah. i didn't i didn't think to call it one <laughs> you know but uh, <laughs> yeah but uh it's it's you know it's just kind of uh a group of songs so basically this last year i've been working on a couple different a few different groups of songs and uh the memoirs to stuff is stuff that i've written in the last year with lead synth stuff and my and a lot of it has the vocal effects kind of stuff so it's it's similar to live from apartment two but live from apartment two is more sparse and spread out because it's sort of stuff that i just jammed on and sort of mm-hmm. you know a lot of it the lyrics weren't were just not written so i just kind of you know as i came up with these ideas for the songs i just kind of expanded on sort of a mel- vocal melody but the new album is going to be like full-on songs you know they have they mean things you know uh yeah, yeah. so that's that's going to come out sometime this month and then you know similarly like throughout this last year i was also working on this group of songs that uh i 
each they each they take on similar sort of electronic elements, but they all started from a, a riff on my acoustic guitar. Oh, cool. So the outcome is, you know, sometimes the uh, the acoustic guitar gets a little lost in it, but the outcome is that it's uh, this the the third album I'm going to do is going to be it's like kind of more like a somber sort of singer songwriter thing, but mm-hmm. where where the electronic elements just serve as sort of a backing band kind of thing. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some lead synth parts, you know, because it's hard not to when you have that have that stuff. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, so it, I mean, somewhat it's kind of like, so, you know, I started off doing acoustic stuff then got really deep into writing just from electronic sort of synth and drum machine. Mm-hmm. Where this group of songs I've been working on last year was kind of a return to... You know, I decided to just pick up my guitar and play it a lot more often, you know, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not a super talented guitar player, but like I've, I use it as just whatever sort of an instrument to be background music to whatever kind of vocals I'm working on, you know, so similar to a synthesizer or whatever, you know, so, you know, I find, you know, the more, the more and more I sit down and actually play guitar, like I start to really get into it and feel better and feel more comfortable riffing around, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know about you guys, but like I grew up with, you know, even just in meth and goats, like Nick, our original drummer who played guitar in Trilams, then Dennis guitar player and Ray, that was our second drummer in meth and goats. Like we, we all went to high school together, same age. And like, like those three dudes were like, it was very intimidating growing up as a musician around those guys. Cause they, mm-hmm. all three of them could just pick up their type of guys that could pick up any instrument and just play it. Wow. Oh, yeah. You know, like I, I grew up with Nick since like kindergarten, he grew up the block next to me and it was like, he didn't know how to play drums. Then all of a sudden he was playing drums. I'm like, well, how do you do this? You know? So it's, you know, for us, for some of us musicians that have to like really work at it, you know, it's, it, it pays off to put the time in and, and, you know, you get more comfortable with what you're doing. And, you know, I, I, sometimes I get questions from young artists or musicians about, you know, tips on things. And, you know, to me, it's like, Hey, if you want to do this stuff and do it well, like you got to put the time in, you know, like, oh, yeah. You can't, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, yeah, some people, okay. Yeah. You know, some people can just do it naturally You know, some people don't need to put much effort into it, and they're just really good looking, and people like them. You know, right? Yeah. But for us other folk (laughs) that don't have a ton of talent, are you know questionably attractive? You know, it's like you gotta gotta get down there. You gotta put the work in. You know. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One hundred percent. That is great advice coming from Jonathan (laughs) Burns, the great. Jonathan Burns. <laughs> I mean, same thing with same, you know, with me with art. Like I've, where I've, where I've come, in the last year, the last five years, the last ten years, the last twenty years, you know, uh, developing what I do into a sort of certain style. You know, like mm-hmm. actually, you know, my my niece is like seven or eight now, and she's, I mean, she's been talking about wanting to be an artist for a while, and she's. Mm-hmm. She's, that's all she does. She draws in a journal and stuff. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's like, so I, I've been trying to like kind of give her ideas and sort of find ways to sort of, you know, because as I was younger as an artist, I just sort of, you just sort of doodle around until you have mm-hmm. like some real goal or real sort of advantage. You know, I, I went to Black Hawk College, community college here in the Quad Cities for art mm-hmm. and you know, it's like they didn't. I didn't necessarily learn a lot from them, but they just to to have somewhere you could go and like put in the work. You know, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, John, I think that we've uh, let's see, we've reached an hour and a half here. Oh, so, okay. fuck it, one hundred twenty minutes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> one hundred and twenty minutes. Um, do you Matthew. have Do you have any last words? For our listeners from the world of John Burns. Oh, um, 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I'm working on finishing this new album. I, I, I meant to give a shout out to my friend, Seth Knappen. He's, uh, awesome. He's sort of my mentor, uh, here. And he's from, he's a Moline guy too. He's a, a little bit older than me. He was in a band called Darling. Oh yeah. I, I remember hearing of Darling. Yes. And then he didn't like driver and he's done solo stuff, but he just moved out to Portland right before the pandemic hit. And he's, you know, yeah. he moved out there to, he followed love is what he did, you know? <laughs> so he, he went out there to, to find love and uh, he did, but then he also That's found great. that he also found that a pandemic. So he's been, he's been a, he's been a real, a real sort of spirit guide for me musically and sort of emotionally. And he's, he's actually, mastering all all these recordings that i've done so he's oh nice oh that's awesome yeah. music in a sort of similar element as i do his solo stuff is like electronic based with like live guitars and you know it's so it's he gets my vibe but uh sure. i know i know he's gonna listen back to this so i just wanted to give him a shout out nice he's, awesome. He's, awesome he's a guy he likes he likes Tai Chi. He likes Chai Tea. You know, he's one of them. He's, he's <laughs> like both of them, even he's sometimes handsome, at the same time. He's a very handsome man. Oh, yeah. Well, one after the other, you know. You, there you, you go. For one than the other. <laughs> Within the same time frame. But you know, th- I mean, thanks for having me on, guys. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, you know, absolutely. Thank you. 100%. For supporting, supporting local music. And, you know, I mean, you know, Sean Reed, Molly, Corey. Me, I mean, you know, these are all people that, including myself, that I, I, I have a lot of respect for. And, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. You know, hey, thank, have, you, thank you, thank you for supporting local music too. Yes, absolutely. By the way. Thank you for giving me uh, the Meth and Goats live shows back in the day. Those were always nice. fun. Yeah. Um, yep. Baby Noir. That that's still to this day one of the one of my favorite things that. You, Corey, and Molly, and Laura have all done. Yeah, that was fun. I got to see you, all, you guys play. That was cool. Yeah. Um, that uh, Iowa City House show, Eric? That was, I think, at um, Roz Talks. Oh, okay. It was a Roz Talks thing. Okay. I think um, In the Mouth of Radness played. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. right. yep. Yeah. So that was cool. Yep. Awesome. Um, uh, another Eric Whitaker memory for me was uh, one of the Mission Creeks above the Deadwood when uh, Los Voltage played. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. yeah, we got to play a couple of those. That, we, that was always the funnest for me. Was those me uh, and Deadwood shows? We did it. it. Was me and Laura, and I remember it's like I think that was the only time I saw you guys perform, and I was like, damn. You know, I heard the recordings, but I was like, damn, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, we had our we had our full stereo set up at that show, which uh, made people throw up sometimes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you know, why be in a band if you can't make people throw up sometimes? I don't know. You're asking the wrong guy. There's, <laughs> there's just no other reason to do it. Um, <laughs> nice. So yeah, uh, Centaur Noir at dot bandcamp dot com. Go check out Live I mean, from Apartment Two and all the other yeah. stuff. And new stuff coming out this and month, the, right? And the new stuff coming out. Yeah, um, uh, you know, should start with keep an eye out for uh, Corey. Um, Corey's doing a music video for the first single. So. Oh yes, absolutely. So he's. I've decided to just sort of hire him to do video, a video, a video for each album I'm doing this year, which oh, cool. is going to be at least three, maybe maybe four. I just, I actually just bought this synthesizer at the at the salvation army the other day and i oh decided oh said, wow eric is- you know much about this brand bone tempe oh yeah sure like they're a, like a 60s 70s organ company for the most part well this one is like a mid 80s it's the uh bone tempe az 9000 pcm stereo midi synth so it has midi in and out and it has like you know an uh, you know eighth inch out or quarter inch out and it has like you know, just your basic sounds, but it has like a cool, like a couple, a string ensemble sound that sounds cool and a couple of synth sounds, flute sound. And you nice. can do these accompany, so I can do like bass sounds on the lower notes. And, and it has like a built in sort of like effects thing where you can be like sustain, vibrato. Nice. And wow. It awesome. So working on this new release with just that, with sounds just from that synth. 
Oh, cool. Dude. Yeah. Kind of gone I about, can't I've, wait to hear that. I've gone from last year, throughout the last year, using like Ableton and mm-hmm. my Korg synth, which just kind of like, you get to this point where it's like unlimited sounds. For sure. Now, now I'm working inside the box of this like mid 80s Italian synth where like, yeah. and, and I make it sound fancier than it is. It's, I mean, it's a step up from like a Yamaha or a Casio keyboard, Casio. but right. But it, I mean, it has some cool piano sounds. It's cool synth sounds. So yeah. it's just cool to to the way I write stuff to go back to like being restricted. You know, like oh, okay, yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes that's just the best method. You know, fewer options instead of more options sometimes is the way to do it. Simplicity. Yeah. Well, and that's and that's part of part of with live from apartment two was that where. I would just come up with, like I said, a basic groove and then be like, okay, now I'm just going to do one lead synth, one lead vocal. Where before I was writing inside the box a lot in Ableton and sort of just like, oh, I should do like five layers of synthesizer parts, you right. know? Sure. But, you know, I found then trying to really mix stuff on my own that gets so complicated because you're dealing with, from a mixing standpoint, sometimes less is better because there's not as much competing frequencies, you oh, know, for sure. highs and uh, lows and everything's battling anyway. So, I mean, yeah. we're working on 120 minutes now, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, John, thanks for being our guest. Yeah, um, thanks so much. You cool. can, uh, I'll send you guys some sneak preview tracks. Ooh, All awesome. Right. Um, into it. You can still Dude, find, uh, again, uh, yeah. a seltzery thirst, at uh, hotmail.com. Yep. <laughs> there you Alka go. Alka Seltzer Thirst. That's, uh, Was it Hotmail or GeoCities? I can't remember. One of those two. Just send it to both and we'll get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get somewhere <laughs> to somebody. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. One so, last thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, Davenport Ragged Records is reopening in July. It's going to be killer. Oh, yes. Nice gonna be i'm gonna be working at both locations rock island and davenport so you know hopefully we'll get you know also next door to where we're moving in and davenport's gonna be the new raccoon motel which is the sean Mulder booked Mm. venue Mm -hmm. so that should be interesting once we kind of are more comfortable doing live shows you know uh, that's great yeah so you guys have to come up or come over absolutely absolutely yeah for sure 100 (laughs) percent Just to be specific, for Dan, it's coming up. For Eric, where are you living now, Eric? Iowa City. So yeah, so that's over. over. Yeah, that's over. I've heard yeah. some people talk about going from Iowa City to the Quad Cities. But I gotta go up to the Quad Cities. No, it's over. You've seen yeah. them, right? It's over. I say over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do go down to Muscatine. I mean, and yeah. it's not just directions. It's like. <laughs> There's it's a lot all- of judgment when I say it. Like, oh, I got to go down to Muscatine. Yeah. No, you know, for how much, how much it's funny to make fun of Muscatine. Like I said, that it's, you know, <laughs> some of the, some of the best musicians out of Iowa in the last years are from Muscatine. Wow. Uh, you know, present Cup included, and also, <laughs> I mean, even, I mean, even Will Whitmore. You know, I mean, he's down south yeah. from there. You know, Lee yeah. County. Lee yes. County. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank think, you very much. That's I, I appreciate that a lot, John. All right, and I'm Dan, and I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>